Good evening. Call to order the meeting of the BOHS number six board, uh, Monday, July 13th, 2015. And welcome everyone and thank you all for uh, your service during a nice, beautiful summer evening. And we might be uh, wishing we were outside, but uh, we'll I think we can dispatch this uh, business fairly easily. There's not a, a tremendous amount of heavy lifting to do tonight, I don't believe. Uh, we uh, will start off with the clerk's report as uh, we normally do. And we have two meetings worth of minutes to approve. Uh, the May 18th meeting minutes were deferred at our last meeting. Um, they have been circulated. Um, so we should approve those first, and then we have the June 1st minutes. Is there a motion? I move the minutes of the May 18th meeting. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Any additions, corrections, or deletions to those minutes? If not, all in favor of approving the minutes of May 18th as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Does anybody remember if there were any abstention? <laughs> No? Okay, very good. Uh, June 1st, uh, minutes which were circulated prior to this meeting. Is there a motion accordingly? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, moved second. All right. Is there, are there any uh, additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay. How about you, Rick? Do you like all those minutes from the last yeah, two meetings? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes of June 1st, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Abstain. I'll say the June 1st, yeah, I'll abstain from June 1st. Okay, thank you, we're not there. Okay, all right, they are, both sets of minutes are passed. Um, we have visitors tonight, a visitor, two visitors actually, and the regular uh, BCTV person, uh, Cora Trowbridge and- Wendy Mason. Wendy Mason from BCTV. And we'd like to uh, have them uh, present a little bit to us in the beginning of the meeting. And we have some a little bit of a survey here, I see. So go right ahead. Oh, great. All right, I'm going to come up in your mic. TV monitor, I can't be far away from that. Um, my, uh, my name is Cora Trowbridge. I'm the executive director of BCTV, uh, Brown Road Community Television. And I'm here with our board chair, Wendy Mason, um, just to tell you a little bit about um, the strategic planning that we're doing for BCTV right now and how that affects you or to seek your input, really. Um, you might have seen in today's paper an article about um, that we're reaching out to try and determine what sh goals we should be having for the upcoming five or six year period. At this time, every five years, we go through a contract renewal with Comcast and also with Southern Vermont Cable. Um, those are our two cable providers, and they provide 90% of the funding for the work that we do. And just briefly, what, what BCTV is, is a public access station, different than some of the other stations like public, just plain old public television, in that um, we are funded by a small fee on cable subscriber fees, small percentage of cable subscriber fees pays for this service, and the public benefit that the residents get is um, we coverage of municipal meetings like yours, and also, um, also any resident can make a program and put it on our channel. So it's a means to communicate with local people using television. Um, we have about 6,000 Comcast households in the Brattleboro, Vernon, Guilford area. And so that's who sees your programming, that, along with about 2,000 in the Southern Vermont Cable area that also get the programming. Those include the towns served by BUHS, Putney, and Dummerston. Those also go through the Leland Gray towns, um, Newfane towns, and, and Jamaica. Um, so um, what we do for you, and have done for you, I just want to introduce you to this website that we've had up for about a year. And um, 
we do, we have your meetings on here, which we've been covering since, for 10 years? At least. At least. <laughs> and we started putting them online in March 2011, I believe. And um, if you go to this watch menu, you go to meetings over here, you can scroll down to BOHS School Board. Hopefully you can see that. Tiny. And if you click on that, you're going to go to your page. Um, and there you are. <laughs> so this page right here that has this nice URL, brownroadtv.org, BOHS School, School Board, that's your page of all of your meetings. The most recent one is going to be displayed on top of all of them or down below. All, all eight pages of them, okay? If you weren't sure what you wow. said about something, you can go back and review it. <laughs> um, so one thing that I would want to recommend to you to, for something specific is when I go to the website for this board, which may or may not be this page, does that look familiar well, to the, you? Yeah. That's the supervisory union's website, so okay. we're part of that. For yes. that board? Yeah, that's yep. our board. Okay. So when you go to this page, right now, you see meeting agendas and meeting minutes. You could also have links to the meeting videos just by putting the link to this page I just showed you on, this, on that page. So people could watch the meeting as well as seeing the minutes and the agendas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, something else I noticed on this page is that under community links, um, there is a link to BCTV, but it's from a website that was dead about 10 years ago. So, <laughs> so this is something that should be updated. We do send your, the links for each of the meetings to Jeff, I think is the guy at the office there. So I don't know if you ever see those links distributed or have access to them. Um, but for your purposes, you could be making a lot more use of these videos. Um, you are paying for them. And we know people watch them, but, um, but it's really meant to be a tool for your use. We've set this website up. So each page, if you go to this board meeting, your last board meeting, um, could really be a mini website for the meeting. You can add links, you can add documents, you could add descriptions, we could add, uh, Debbie's taking note of agenda items and the time codes for those and we're going to start entering those on there so you could be scrolling through to whichever agenda item you wanted to go to. So it's really um, built to be an online resource for the people who are using it. And I'd be happy to talk to anyone more about that um, who was interested or would be interested in, in using that. And that's browserbrowntv.org again just so you know that's Right. Um, we play out this meeting on the Thursday night follow the meeting, following this meeting. So your meetings are Monday. So on the Thursday night following the meeting, your meeting is always going to be on in the sort of 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock-ish time. That's something that you can tell people as well. Um, what else do we do? We have, I worked with um, Jim Day and Gary Blomgren a while ago to get VUHS TV on BCTV, which I'm sure you're all aware of. And we have that also on the website in this BOHS TV news series. So again, all of those shows are here. Um, and um, this is a show that we not only have been broadcasting live on Channel 10 at the time of the morning advisory report, but we've also been rebroadcasting it at 6 p.m. on Channel 8 for parents who weren't able to see it live. Um, we did see with the exchange students that you have, we you do see a lot of international viewers of that show. <laughs> so that's something. Um, but that's a collaboration that we've had with the school that we're really proud of. And um, we also have, been co have covered graduation, as many of you know. And that's another series. And this also is a link you can have on the school website, um, is this graduation. And um, we also show, uh, broadcast that live on channel 10. So we, get, uh, we, we do have a lot of views live on that. And then again, these are all the graduations that we've covered. Uh, we have covered some sports, but it's mainly been uh, because uh, coaches um, have recorded some of their games and then given them to us to show. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be meeting with um, Steve Perrin and 
hopefully some other interested faculty in August to talk a little bit more in detail about how we could facilitate that more and what it would take. I know people want to watch high school sports on BCTV. It's just a matter of that something would have a cost. So for us to do it, um, but if coaches are making game tapes anyway, maybe that's something that's, uh, that can just happen. Um, we, we publicize the schedule in the Reformer and in the Commons on a weekly basis so people can find out when your meeting is or all these other shows. And um, we also have the schedule on the website right here in the TV schedule, which is an online TV guide. So here's the schedule for today. And what do you know? The BUHS school board <laughs> was on at 2.30 p.m. So that's right there on uh, channel 10. And you can find out what time it is, and you can also click right through to the on-demand version of it. So the reason that we work so hard to try and, and, and tell people when things are on is that when you go to your cable guide right now, unlike other channels that have shows broken out on the cable guide, um, ours just show one long thing that says local, one long program. Um, so right now, what we would like to do, um, work with Comcast on, is getting access to that cable guide so that people can click on the shows um, and use the cable guide the way they do normally for shows, which is click on it, find out more information about it, um, and DVR it, something like that. But we found ways to try and get the word out about when programming is using other means. And you can also find our schedules every week uh, on, in the Reformer and on our Facebook page as well. So there's multiple ways to find it. Um, now I'd like to show you a very short three minute video that's just a compilation of what's on BCTV right now. And then I'd like to get your feedback and comments. This is BCTV, Cobra's own bag access TV station, the first of its kind in the state of Vermont, and the facility behind the Comcast cable channels 8 and 10, our government and education sister channel. From recordings of area events like lectures and readings from places like Brooks Memorial Library, to music, dance, and other art performances out in the community, the station's robust municipal coverage in every one of the towns we serve. See, technically, BCTV serves a lot more than just Brattleboro, as our camera operators each week document meetings in Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. It's just that VGDP NTJ BCTV is a little less catchy than just BCTV. And town meetings are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the municipal coverage available on BCTV. Now there's town and high school board meetings, planning commission, development review board, and a whole lot more to choose from when it comes to keeping up with the inner workings of your town. Now, Channel 10 alone boasted a wide range of other programming this year, including the ever-popular morning news advisory broadcast from the high school, BUHS-TV, along with Wyndham 4 rep Mike Merwicky's own State House program, Montpelier Connection, which transmits via Ustream during the legislative session, bringing it back to the studio in the off-season. And when you move on over to Channel 8, there's a whole lot more programming to talk about. Here's the Landmark College Broadcast Journalism class putting to work their three-week winter intensive by producing not one, but six different half-hour evening news programs. And then, of course, there's the absolutely brilliant youngsters behind our annual summer camp. And there's plenty of other BCTV classics living within the folds of the Channel 8 Weekly Programming Guide. our news roundup 545 live or here's WTSA news director Tim Johnson hosting another BCTV open studio interview and for some of the area's biggest events like strolling of the heifers we go all out at BCTV 
Here we are on Stroll Weekend 2014, hooking up once again all four of our HD studio cameras after transporting just about every piece of equipment we own down the block to broadcast live from the River Garden. Here we are at BHS Graduation 2014, getting ready to broadcast our coverage live in HD. Fast forward just a few short hours later, and we're setting it all up again in Townsend for Leland and Gray's Saturday morning graduation exercises. Here's the world-renowned Temple Grandin speaking at Landmark College, a BCTV production that generated over a thousand views in its first weekend up. So from 30 seconds to nine straight hours, BCTV's channels provide an avenue for content that's unbound by the formula of network TV. a little idea if you're not if you don't watch BCTV of what's on now and really like to hear from you kind of your comments suggestions improvements um, one thing that we're really interested in is having a high definition channel like all the other channels um, that are on cable we have just a, a standard definition one um, but uh, that's something that we are sort of surveying people to see if that's important um, and um, and taking your suggestions did everybody get a survey, by the way? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, Rick. No, it's fine. If you would uh, be so kind as to fill it out, and we'll leave it uh, at the end of the meeting with the camera person. Questions? Just thinking about the shows that you do, have you ever done, um, if it's okay with the, the uh, high school and middle school music directors, um, the concerts, there's about three, four concerts a year. Yes. And um, parents and, and grandparents who are far away would really enjoy seeing them. Concerts are a great, uh, great question. Sometimes there's copyright yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. Concerts, uh, theatrical performances are really hard because of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's something that we're going to be talking about in August about what concerts could be, could could have the copyright freedom to get, let us be able to do that. We also would have to have the parents sign off to let their children be on BCTV. Will we look better on high definition? <laughs> Gorgeous. You have to look. Me, I'm not so sure. The difference is, well, I mean, a lot of you probably have high definition televisions, and, and you know, the difference just is astounding, really, and we would like to be a part of that. Um, a lot of people nowadays kind of expect that out of their television stations, and they stay in the 700s or the 800s, and they're not thinking about browsing channels 10 or 8 because it's so low on the channel guide, so... We produce everything in HD, yeah. so we just have to downgrade it to send it to Comcast. Hmm. My other thing is, I would like to see, and I don't know what this would involve, I know nothing about television, um, but I, I would like, particularly like to see these um, meetings broadcast in real time and be interactive so that the people at home could Make comments well, like through during the meeting through Twitter or something. Through I don't know through what. <laughs> I told you I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Live tweeting the BOHS board meeting. It just <laughs> sounded like a good idea. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. That's that's a great comment. We don't have any um, cable where I live, but I'm able to take advantage on the. Uh, on the net, so that's I think that's really nice that you can go and look up any meeting and mm -hmm. and use it that way. So and you can I don't think we're ever going to get cable right now. So yeah, that's very common. We actually run into yeah. that a lot, of course, mm -hmm. with our sur surveying. I actually myself don't have cable, but I watch uh, programs online either through the video demand function or streaming it live because mm -hmm. you can watch channels eight and ten actually live, whatever they're playing uh, through the website too. Oh. A little shout out to Debbie Lazar. Yes. Who comes here camera person. <laughs> to record your meetings. Uh, anything else? 
Um, one thing I'm, I am going to be talking to Steve and whatever faculty member wants to meet um, about is just repurposing media. I know how much you all do to do outreach with media. You post photos, you, you make videos, you, you know, you're doing all this kind of stuff anyway. So um, just talking about how you can also submit that to BCTV. So you're not doing something new. You're just you're getting more distribution out of what you're already doing. Because um, we are distributing through the channel and through the web. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much okay. for your time thank and you. for your responses. Oh, yeah, Lori. What is the nonprofit fee? Is there a fee for nonprofits to be members? We do have a, a nonprofit organizational membership kind of thing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, uh, it starts at $50. Uh, it's sort of based on employee, number of employees. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just to, um, and then you get all the member benefits for in, the members of that organization. Mm -hmm. so that's a way so that individuals can join as individuals, but it's a way for an organization to join in. So um, when you do have time, please do fill out the uh, um, surveys. You're welcome to place any other suggestions there that you may not be thinking of right now, and then Debbie can pick that up before she leaves tonight. That would be wonderful. Okay. Just Thank you. Us Thank, you very much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I realized in my rush to uh, get these folks on that I didn't complete the clerk's report section. Uh, see if there are any communications. Okay, if not, then we would move on to a consent agenda. Is there a motion accordingly? I move we go to the consent agenda. Second. Second by Ricky. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, we are in consent agenda. And as usual fashion, we will start with finance committee. Finance committee met on Thursday, June 11th. And we approve warrants numbers 1210, 1211, 1213, 1214, 1215, 1217, 1218, 1219, and 1220 for a total of $476.38. We also approved payrolls <laughs> of May 1st in the amount of $440,944 and no cents. May 15th, $547,447.66. And May 29th, the amount of $455,524.23. We also reviewed the capital plan for uh, FY 2016. And we reviewed the roof replacement project bid for FY 2016. And we will be meeting next, this Thursday, July 16th at 8 a.m. in the Jane C. Jane Conference Room at the Surprise Reunion Office on Green Street. Which roof is that bit building? It is the auditorium roof. Oh, yeah. That one's been on the on the docket for a while. Yeah, but uh, going to get it done this summer. Okay. Any questions or comments? Yeah. You can have that. Uh, we just as a note here, we I received a letter from the the new auditing group, Tyler Sims and Saint Sever, a kind of a um, regular letter, just saying that uh, they expect to begin the audit. Uh, approximately on July 1st and then there's a lot of uh, uh, reasonable assurances and all that that goes along with the audit letter but, uh, uh, that may, may have started already Ron <laughs> yep. in process <coughs> straightforward okay I have a quick question about the finance committee yeah. You're not talking about the budget at all yet are you still too early <laughs> I mean I know that I not quite. Sounds like well, a facetious question. Well, in a roundabout way, we are as okay. we talk about these these projects. 
Okay. We are. Yeah. So if a finance committee member expressed interest in attending the finance committee meetings. A non-finance committee? Town finance committee member oh. expressed an interest yeah. to me in attending your yeah. hour. Yeah. Your finance we, we committee We have meetings. had them visit before. Is it a little premature though? Well, if they're interested in the budget, it probably is a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Closer towards November. But it's an open meeting. Yeah. 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 If they want to. Yeah, yeah, they're certainly welcome, yeah. but I think this person was planning on coming to this meeting tonight, and I said, well, you're more than welcome anytime, please. But just in eyeballing the agenda, we're not, and based on history, we're not talking about the budget for right. next year yet. We just hit this year for crying out loud. Well, yeah, we just started. Couple 13 weeks. days ago. Okay. We started spending it, yeah. Okay. Well, I can okay. just, yeah. I'll read yeah. requests. They are all open meetings and they are publicized as to their time and location. <laughs> okay, how about WSCSU Finance? Uh, we met on the, um, the 24th of June and approved warrants and payrolls. And uh, Frank's filled us in on a lot of the, the, the look at the year end, um, which wasn't quite done, but it, it seven days left. But we um, things seem to be right on track, um, and then laid out a schedule of audits and different sorts of state reports that we would be giving and, and receiving um, during the, the rest of the summer and into the fall. And our next meeting is July 29th at 5 p.m. You're all welcome and the town finance person is certainly welcome mm -hmm. as well. They'll be in the, uh, the Jim King meeting. Okay, thank you, Russ. Uh, planning and policy? Has not met. Okay. Teacher curriculum committee. Um, has not met, but I understand that we're going to have to put a meeting together pretty quickly because there's some one percent stuff to for us to approve. But we haven't we have not met since our last meeting. But we will be scheduling one of those really soon. There's also a, was a uh, is a request. I don't know if Andy's going to mention that or Steve sent me a uh, for a leave of absence. Does that uh, re require us to uh, the, or would be the TCC committee this time of year to vote on that or to we can do that. We can do it in TCC or we can do it in the regular. Yeah. I mean, I, I know they can do it, but is there just a leave of absence generally? He, he did send me with uh, that request. Okay. So, uh, as far as procedure. Okay. Uh, well, that normally this time of year would just go, TCC would mm -hmm. handle that, um, but it's already pretty much in the works, right? right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we should just do it tonight, didn't we? Okay. During, during the high yeah, school we report, get, get, it, we get it across. We're going to need to do on that okay. session. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we should. Uh, that should be an executive session yep. matter, so we can, we can do that. Okay. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. BAMS committee. Um, BAMS committee met on June 18th, and we approved the hiring of um, a tech ed pers person, an academic support person, and a 0.25 foreign language person. So I believe, and Mr. Lyman can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all the staff stuff is in place for next year. Uh, incorrect. Okay. Last I knew, that's where we were. But yeah. so, but we did, but we did some, we did some approval of some hiring at that meeting. And then we also did, we approved um, a number of 1% things, some for teams and some for um, individual teachers and other things, so. Do we have to um, ratify that? Nope. No. It was a tech ed and a .25 foreign language. And an academic support. Well, the, the academic, academic support, we were, we were still waiting at that one. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's been. No, it hasn't. Okay, mm -hmm. so no academic support. Oh. It didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. But well, we did authorize the summer intern for the beans. Yep. Okay. Interim. Interim intern. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But just a point of clarification. Are we sure we don't have to ratify? The full board doesn't have to ratify what a committee did, even though we authorized the Well, it will be act. once we approve once we approve um, consent agenda that ratifies everybody's report. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that's, that's usually the way. Okay. When we approve, when we all approve consent agenda in a few minutes, then we'll approve everybody's reports. And that's when that takes, that ratifies it. Okay. At that point. Good. Okay. Nice Thank you, Ricky. Uh, WRCC committee did meet, um, and we uh, approved the appointment of a new co-op coordinator, Raymond Dunn. Um, we accepted a resignation of the automotive para, and we reviewed and approved four 1% funds as requested. Uh, I think that's it, right? That's what we did? That's it, and, and we're not replacing that para. So that's, that's one staff member. Right. Right. We're not replacing. Okay. Anything else for a consent agenda? If not. Is there a motion to accept consent agenda? To move. Ruth. Second. Second. Laura, you're on mic. Mike. Laura, Laura was louder. Yeah. Okay. Oh All in favor? So Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> or abstentions? Seeing none. Consent agenda is passed. And we move on to administrative reports. Uh, you want to filling in for Mr. Perrin? Would you like to sure. give us what you have? Um, well, Mr. Perrin, apologies for not being able to be here tonight. Um, send me up some talking points. Graduation was a great success. Uh, we had, um, we're glad to have such great weather, and the feedback we've gotten has been very positive. We were able to attend it, was a great event. Uh, a group of UHS teachers spent a week studying the process of implementing proficiency-based practices at the UHS. For the 15-16 school year, we'll be focusing, we'll, we will focus on piloting proficiency-based assessments in the classroom and community outreach. We'll be sharing more with the board at the goal-setting session later this summer. The custodial staff has been working hard to prepare the school for the rapidly approaching school year. Work has begun on auditorium lighting to replace fixtures with more efficiency, energy efficient ones. The auditorium roof is uh, scheduled to begin in August. Um, and the floor work in the high school, middle school, and WRCC are scheduled to begin soon. Work on the new building access system is also scheduled for later in July. And we're still waiting for materials to arrive to finish the concrete um, front. Uh, and then the other one was the staffing. Do you want to talk about that now or wait? Is that the, um, the request for the leave of Yeah, that would do an executive okay. session. Yeah. What's the new building access? Um, so the the security system with the, the swipe card and the punch, um, each one of those, uh, it's outdated, is my understanding. Yeah. Um, and okay. many of them are not working. You know, you just need a key, so we're updating the whole system. I remember that now. I have a question, Andy. You, I really didn't get it. You're talking about proficiency-based learning, and then I heard community outreach. How did how do those things meld together? I I, I, I believe, and I was just reading Steve. So um, I think that there's a lot of what we have to do is is educating the community on what proficiency-based assessment is going to be, uh, because it'll be eventually a move away from that numerical grade system that we've been on. And so we want to make sure the community is aware and understands fully what we're implementing so that we front load that as opposed to be reactive. Yeah, do you know what the approximate time frame on the auditorium roof is once it gets started? Is that a. He did not give you that It's sounding like getting awfully close to the. That's what I thought. School. <laughs> he told me it should begin by August. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we probably don't. Is there anything yeah, right off the bat that has to happen in the auditorium? Or? Uh, we typically will have uh, freshman orientation in there. Yeah. Uh, Just me yeah. 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 That's not important. One time a year, I use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow we survived the flood and worked around it, so it probably is a workaround for this, too. But hopefully, it won't be too many weeks to. And they'll start early in August. Well, the fact that I have to have that meeting, I should prompt them to get it done. Okay. 
Well, sure. good motivation for them. <laughs> well, there might be board members that can go up and roll some rubber out. And mm -hmm. well, I thought maybe Mr. Staley would get yeah. desperate and go up and <laughs> roll some rubber. Yeah. Yeah. But no, you have to be certified yeah. in that roofing. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Sure. And thanks for filling in for Mr. Perrin. Uh, BAMS? Sure. Um, yeah, so our graduation, uh, well, our move up ceremony, great move up, was uh, also successful. Uh, it's amazing. We, we packed that high school gym packed tight. It's so. a speaker. Yeah, yeah it's just, he draws a big crowd. So it went well, and. Uh, was happy, happy with everything. Uh, the like, all the work in the years prior made the process really smooth for the, the new guy coming in. It was very easy. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> currently we have uh, beams and our our summer programming, our summer learning combined with our beams summer program going on, and uh, that's a really impressive thing. Uh, we have between forty five and fifty students every every day coming to that. Um, it fluctuates a little bit by week, but that's a four week program. And then we have a communities camp, which happens, I think it's the first week of August, which is a totally separate thing, but it's grant funded through the state. But uh, we have that, and then we have a wilderness camp, uh, the second week of August, uh, that's also with the beans. So, um, uh, very happy so far with uh, the summer learning. It's been smooth. The kids have been really great, uh, good staff, and uh, um, uh, very happy with that process. They've been doing things uh, with the after afternoon stuff, the, the, the beams part of it. They're doing things like blueberry picking, going to Memorial Park, going to Broad Brook, swimming. Um, kids love being out in the gym and being able to uh, basically just have a lot of fun and run around and but the gym is real popular um, a couple things going on with us we had uh, <clears throat> we did a couple days of training uh, we call it Alice training which is uh, learning about uh, kind of a uh, potentially new approach to responding to school uh, crisis um, act particular active active shooters and, and looking at how schools have traditionally responded with traditional lockdowns and, and looking at a more proactive approach to that. So two pretty intensive days of uh, training at the end of June. Uh, most, most of the administration did that. And um, so I'm sure there'll be more to share as we move along with that. Um, Right before that, we went to a week uh, at the Middle Grades Institute, which is uh, kind of in coordination with the um, Tarrant, um, our partnership with Tarrant. And you can look through this little handout I have. It's a little summary that I sent to the staff um, <clears throat> with a nice little picture at the end. Um, <clears throat> basically, we, well, so we spent a week at um, Vermont Tech, staying in dorms. Uh, some people drove home. Uh, during the week, but most of us stayed in dorms and had a great time. Uh, I was, uh, you know, we're able to get I think 19 of us to go. Joe Rivers has uh, been been teaching up there as a leader for that No Grades Institute for about 20 years. So uh, this was the first time that BAMS has had a team there. So um, I was pretty excited to have uh, 19 of us there. We made a lot of really great progress moving our school forward. This this uh, has links in it, which you obviously think, can't click on in, on paper, but if any of you want access to them, you can certainly uh, uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll give you more access. Uh, we, well, this, uh, our facilitator will be working with us, her name's Rachel Mark, and she, she'll work for Tarrant, she'll come in and uh, the next three years to be partnered with our school and really um, facilitating some um, trans transformative work um, with the middle school. And she helped facilitate those really tough uh, conversations we had up there. Um, so uh, 
you know, if you took a minute to read this, we really tackled PLPs, which are part of Act 77 in the law, and also making our Chromebook one-to-one -one initiative really more effective and putting in really detailed plans for how to distribute all the nuts and bolts of how the kids take around Chromebooks, but also um, how they're used by teams. And uh, so some really, really uh, great work that just, you, you don't have the opportunity to work 18 teachers working together for five days straight to be able to have that kind of time to work and really make plans. And what we did was broke off in a lot of subgroups to tackle certain topics and make decisions on behalf of the entire school. And it was pretty powerful. And then we had to have group decisions, like the group was about this size, so we're sitting there trying to make really major in, uh, decisions for the entire school and to get everybody to agree on what we're gonna do was at times challenging, and it was powerful, I thought. Mm. So um, I was really happy with that. Um, and I look forward to updating you as we, we move forward with this work. Um, Last but not least, I wanted to um, announce a resignation, um, which uh, <clears throat> a little surprised to get uh, Norm Whittle is uh, resigning after 19 years in our district and uh, to take up another job, another position at, at um, high school in New Hampshire. Um, really seem to want to get back to the high school level. So um, the uh, he really wanted to make sure that the board uh, understood how appreciative he was of those for those 19 years. So I would ask that you accept his resignation. I move we accept Norm Whittle's resignation with regret. Second. Second by Lou. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none. Resignation is approved. That's all I have. Thanks. I have a question. Sure. This middle school institute, middle grades institute that you went to, does that whole thing have any connection with the proficiency based learning that Andy is talking yes. about? Yes. Okay. Perfect question. Yes. It just feeds right into it. Okay. It really does. I thought it did, but I wanted to make sure. We didn't specifically tackle that at the middle grades institute, but our partnership with the Tarrant. There's three major goals with them. The PLPs, the one-to-one, -one, and proficiency-based, um, that whole piece. So, yes, very okay. much so. So We're everything all, is kind of progressing along. Yes. PLPs, what was the middle one? Personalized Learning Plans, PLPs, uh, the one-to-one -one kind of Chromebook initiative, one which one. is a little more of a short-term goal, and, um, and then uh, the proficiency-based Education is probably a little further out. It's a little less urgent than the high school, but uh, it's there. Okay, thank you, Keith. Mr. Burnett. Thanks, Wade. So this summer, WRCC will be offering a summer STEM program for uh, middle school age girls. It's going to be focusing on uh, STEM science, technology, and engineering, and math. And right now we have 24 participants signed up. And we will be providing busing to and from their uh, home sites as well. So that will be beginning the last week of July and into the first week of August. So we're looking forward to that, the first uh, ever STEM summer program. Nice. Get young ladies interested in this ever-growing field of STEM. The week of June 29th, <coughs> WRCC engineering student uh, Leanne Ogden and I spoke about pre in previous meetings, uh, competed in the Skills USA national competition held in Louisville, Kentucky. Leanne completed, competed in the computer-aided drafting competition and placed 18th in the country. So good for Leanne. Job well done. And thanks to Amy Anthony, our engineering teacher, for traveling with Leon for an entire week after school is out. Uh, our FBLA organization recently attended their summer FBLA conference held in Chicago, Illinois. 
the kids did great in all the business experiences they encountered and the kids had experiences they could only dream of. We want to thank the board for continued support of FBLA and thanks to the advisors Barb Vinci and Mary Beth Cornell for traveling with the students. Uh, for the past three weeks, the WRCC Culinary Space has hosted a culinary training for 24 local adults seeking out culinary school skills and preparation. This program was funded through a grant through uh, Strolling of the Heifers and orchestrated by Orly Munson and was taught by Tristan Tolino. So this was a great uh, community based uh, uh, opportunity for adults in the Brattleboro area. And now they will be doing internships throughout the rest of the summer at local uh, culinary establishments to utilize the skills they've learned and hopefully they'll get jobs, full-time jobs after the internships, which is great. Uh, next week I will be attending a three-day Career Center Directors Conference in Fort Smith, New Hampshire. And this conference will include all Career Center Directors from the state of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. This is the second year that all three state directors have met to share best practices within the CTE areas. And this is a great opportunity to learn what other New England states are focusing on for CTE improvement and to share out with each other. So I'm looking forward to that for the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And uh, our annual award ceremony was held and before school was out. And we had about 300 people show up, which was a great turnout. They all enjoyed dinner and uh, want to thank the community for showing and supporting uh, the Career Center. That's it. Okay, thank you. Mike, Sorry. quick question. Yeah. So you mentioned there's 24 students that have signed up for the STEM program this summer. What would the capacity for that be? Is that the capacity? There hasn't been a capacity set. Oh, okay. And we're still accepting applications until the end of this week. Excellent. And Jana Kras is our summer coordinator. She can be reached by via email to the district. I guess I'm too old since I'm past eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to make one accept. Never too old. Never too old? Never too old. Okay, thank you. Central office? Yeah, I have two items that uh, require executive session for some okay. reason. All right. All right. And I have nothing specific. So I believe that concludes administrative reports. And we move on to unfinished business, which includes a policy review of the dress code. Uh, Russ handed out at the beginning of this meeting some uh, uh, note, some revisions that he put into this. Uh, just rearranging things, nothing substantive. Um, definitely like your arrangement better. Uh, so we will happily accept that as a friendly amendment uh, and go with that. Uh, other than that, any other notes for the second reading of this post? The, the two questions I had was one, <clears throat> towards the beginning it talks about the board shall authorize school regulations. Are there school regulations beyond this? On the first um, Yeah. There are? Okay. 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 Uh, and those are in the, um, what's handed out? The handbook, yeah. yeah. There are some slightly different policy uh, procedural things at yes. dams, right? Yeah. Right. And then We're still kind of hashing those out a little bit, but. Yeah. And then uh, another, another So an example could be the career center with, um, you know, in the shops, in the yeah. requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the official second reading, which would mean at our next meeting it would be up for adoption. So if there are any any issues, get them uh, get them out there. Yeah, I mean, the only other things that well, one is just sort of amused that that hats and caps are banned in the middle school, and it's up to the discretion of the high school and career center. And you're okay with that? I mean, that's, I don't want to wade into that. Okay. Works pretty well for us. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big responsibility. Okay. That's the 
second reading of that. Is there anything else for unfinished business? Mm -hmm. uh, under new business, we already uh, heard from BCTV. Is there this is an attachment. Is there anything on else under new business? Okay. If not, is there a motion to move into executive session? I move we go into executive session for personal matters. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Sean. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, 